Hello everyone. Today is Sunday, August 13, 2023 at 10.56 a.m. in the morning. Here they're making me yawn. Excuse me. I kind of lollygagged and procrastinated a little bit before I did the video. So I did like a quick shorter video last night and then I wrote a short story. You can look at my short story in the community post. In my most recent community post I have a short story that I promised to write last night. <clears throat> but um you know, I'll say that it wasn't the best, but I think I didn't do too bad, you know. So, thanks for the three people who supported and gave a thumbs up. So... Yeah, so David Jane came to harass me like in the middle of the night, the night before last, well, super early yesterday morning, before four o'clock in the morning or whatever. I think it was. I don't remember. It was before two o'clock or something in the morning, he came to harass. Then he came to harass again yesterday evening or afternoon or something. And then... I mean, so, last night, I went to bed about 12 or 12.30 in the middle of the night. Now they're vibrating my stomach. They're vibrating my whole body. And so, my sleep was spotty last night in the middle of the night. But I think I got more non-sleep than actual sleep. And then this morning, I think I woke up at 6 o'clock this morning. I think it was like 6.07 in the morning, somewhere around there. <clears throat> excuse me, that I woke up and then couldn't go back to sleep. But now my my arms feel weak and I'm feeling weak and tired and feeling that sleep deprived feeling. Excuse me. <clears throat> and so... I kind of procrastinated and it wasn't until about after nine o'clock or probably nine thirty. I wasn't sure what I was going to eat, but I had some oatmeal with peanut butter and regular butter and some sugar and a little bit of, um, Celtic sea salt. Wow. They vibrated my whole body. They didn't start vibrating me until after I started the video. They vibrated me so bad. And then, I mean, I could block, mostly block out the noise when I have my earbuds in. But you know, when I have my earbuds in, the vibrating is more intense. It has always been that way ever since I started suffering through this. So, I probably could have gone to bed worry-free last night in the middle of the night, but 
they had this person named Elizabeth on Twitter that um when I tweeted something on Twitter and then I I mean well I didn't know that it was gonna turn into a conversation. So me, Elizabeth and this other person were having a conversation you know, about fake T.I. perps and the gang stalking and stuff. And so she chimed in and other people chimed in on my tweet. And then after some time, she acted like as if she thought she had the authority to basically covertly kicked me out of my own thread on my own conversation like to exclude me and then start talking to the other person while she quit mentioning and tagging me or quit talking to me and just talking to that other person no like I did a face palm like cause I like we just got finished talking about fake T.I. perps and this is what you turn around and do But that's not my first time having an issue with her. I let her slide when um, I mentioned about, you know, a few months ago about not getting much back from taxes. And then her and that Nanette person who I had to block a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> excuse me. They both jumped on down my throat and attacked me saying, be lucky that you get any taxes back at all because I owe on taxes. They both jumped on me and attacked me, you know. And I let both of them slide, but I should have blocked them then. But, like, how the hell you kicked me out of my own conversation or my own thread that I start? You know, and then she started mentioning to that one person and talking to just him and excluded me out of my own thread. And so, you know, that bothered me in the middle of the night. And then I just went on to block her. But that was a not an abusive, narcissistic per move right there that she did that. But then, that's like, well, I didn't tag anybody in there, but people started responding to my tweet, you know. But it was like over a year ago this happened when I tried to, I wrote a short story related to targeted individuals and I tried to share it with a few people and try to tag a few people in the post. And then what they did was, they hijacked, everybody ignored my initial tweet. <clears throat> Excuse me. They ignored my initial tweet and then started a conversation that lasted two whole months on my own thread. And they, and I kept on being tagged or mentioned and they weren't even talking to me. And it's like they were all, um, you hijacked my own post just to throw me out and exclude me. And it's a whole bunch of people that was commenting. But they all dismissed and ignored, you know, me trying to share the short story, fiction short story that's related to targeting. And that was making me so mad. It's like I'm not even in this conversation, but I keep getting tagged. Well, I started, but but um, y'all not even talking to me or y'all dismissed and ignored me. They, I mean, they got a lot of people who just very fake and weird with communication. But that Elizabeth person, I mean, it looked like she showed footage of herself being targeted. And... Um, And she seemed like she knows about the Illuminati New World Order and mind control, but she was not shy talking about that she's atheist. 
I'm like, well, y'all unbelievers be the first to call Christians a perp. To falsely accuse Christians of being a perp. But y'all be first to the run to the witchcraft and dark arts and new age. So, yeah, I mean, I felt very disrespected. So, but anyway, I haven't had all that much going on, but I'm feeling psychologically, mentally, and emotionally, and spiritually defeated and exhausted and feeling like I just need a break. And I've been up in here, you know, stressing, stressing so much. So, I mean, I'm sitting here feeling like I need at least three days. Well, include the weekend, five days. Like, I need it up until, at least, like, from, let's see, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, to the Wednesday. Yeah, I need up at until at least this coming Thursday to have like a break from anything related to so the fake social security thing or whatever, you know. And then try to get back to I mean dealing with gathering documentation and everything. I'm being stressed about that. But I mean, I just need a psychological, mental, and emotional break and a rest from all this, you know, stress, being stressed out and, you know, suffering mentally like, I, like I've been suffering, you know. So I had oatmeal today, but I would like, I don't know if how bad the banana had gotten. I have one banana left and this is the longest they ever lasted if they're supposed to be organic bananas. But, um, but with the organic bananas, I got one left and if it's still safe to eat or if it hasn't gone too rotten, I'm hoping that today, before the night is out, I would like to make another banana plum and celery smoothie. And then um, I have today and tomorrow left of um, the chicken... And, um, let's see the chicken and, um, oh, I can't think properly the chicken and, um, help <laughs> the chicken and the pork and beans and rice. So I'm, I'm disappointed because I wish that I, all that other chicken that I had wasn't so soapy. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, after I'm done with the plums and after I'm done with the uh, plums and that last banana, the only fruit I have left is pears. And none of them seem ripe. And I got, I got me a small bag of avocados and I don't know if they're ripe or not. I don't think that they're ripe. But I still have some more yellow, orange, and red sweet little peppers. 
And I still got some green beans, but I don't know if the green beans are good still. And I got me some cilantro and garlic. And so after the next two days of chicken, I got, um, I got some scallops and well, I got me some scallops and I got some more of the eye of round steak of beef. Hold on, wait, I have to use the bathroom. Sorry about that. I'm back. So I accidentally um dropped my phone on the bed. But I'm glad the um I'm glad the video didn't cut off. So So yeah, I I got still got some regular potatoes and sweet potatoes. And I got like I had bought me a 5 pound bag of rice. And I got one pack of noodles and I got um four cans left of the skipjack tuna. And I still got me some grits and farina, but um you know, I'm low on kind of low on the oatmeal and so I got me some I still got me some cheese you know the Kobe Jack and mozzarella but my favorite is American cheese even though it ain't real <laughs> but I'm glad that Sprouts Farmers Market which when I was in Los Angeles, they had some organic, natural American cheese. But all the other American cheese you see is processed and fake. So, but yeah. So I still got a nice bit of food left, but I don't have cereal, milk, and eggs, but I'll wait. You know, I can live without them for, you know, for a little while, like the milk and eggs and stuff. I still got some pancake mix. And I got, um, I still got some pancake mix. And I got some honey. And I got, um, excuse me. Oh. <sighs> I got pancake mix and honey and, um, yeah. And I, I got, still got some more, a little bit of that barley mixture that I made. I, I probably need to use that up before the month is out at least. I don't know how, how long it will last. So. But. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm tired enough to need a nap. Like, I'm still sleepy and tired. Excuse me. <sighs> Sorry. I don't know if I'm going to do any writing today. But, yeah, it's like... I'm feeling like, you know... While, I mean, I'm still somewhat fairly new here, but... I mean, I'm, as I said, I'm glad to have, I'm glad to be off the streets and be less of a financial burden and have a roof over my head. But I absolutely hate it here. I already told y'all, you know, the difficulties. I absolutely hate it here. But if I, it would be much better if I had a car.
I mean, I hate this town. And, and I really don't like living up in this cabin. But I'm glad to be off the streets. I, I wish that I can have, like, a different place to live that's more satisfactory, you know. And if I can get easier transportation. Because, like, this was like a depressing summer of having really nowhere to go. It was like depressing, like when it's usually the winter. But yeah, it was like, this is like a very depressing summer for me. And then it being too hot to go outside and then by the time it gets, the sun goes down and get dark, they have too many mosquitoes. But yeah, I mean, I wish I had a more satisfactory or a better place to live. I mean, I'm angered by the idea of this being such a heavy gang stalking in such a tiny little town. Heavy gang stalking and noise in such a tiny little town. And I can't even have that much mobility to go anywhere, you know. It feels kind of like as if I'm locked up in prison or something. So, but you know, I'm thankful and glad to live somewhere by myself with no roommates. I'm glad to have a roof over my head, you know. But people try to tell me, go move somewhere else. But if I could move somewhere else, I would have done that a long time ago. And I'm also kind of angry in, about that somebody that sent for me to come down here and then the night that I came down here, that's when she ghosted me. And that was the last time she ever spoke to me. So I felt like that was a perfect thing for her to do that. But, you know, people just flip on you and be acting all weird and everything, you know. People just acting bizarre for no reason. But then again, it's better for me to be around less people because the less people, less danger. You know, but I, I don't know. I, I just sitting here feeling like as if everything in Texas related is freaking bad luck. And I have vowed to never want to set foot in Texas again or never wanted to um, come back to Texas. But, you know, I guess I'll try to stay here for as long as I could. And, I mean, unless I can find a better housing situation. But, you know, the, it's frustrating to not have that great of transportation. And then a little bit of transportation that there is, they're trying to sabotage that too. And I can't really get around. And then it's hard to try to get job opportunities and everything. But I thought that when I first got here, you know, I thought that I read online that the little transportation would go to different cities. But if I asked over the phone or asked the transportation driver, they get an attitude with me. 
and make it like as if don't even ask, you know, that they say that the transportation goes to Victoria only. And then, you know, I'm stuck here on weekends. No transportation on the weekends to go anywhere. But, you know, the gang, the online gang stalkers, you know, they constantly make threats to have me back homeless again. And so they complain about what I'm eating and they document what I eat and you weaponize that against me and, you know, they try to say all she does is throw Tony Sacherets on food and take amazing grass supplement and stuff her face with Magnum bars and then call it a day. Well, I don't have that much money for different seasonings and sauces, but I tried out and I have, a, I mean, when I first got here, yeah, that was about the only thing I was using. But, you know, now I have a few different other seasonings and sauces. But the one or two times that the um that the freezer didn't work for a few hours, a couple of times, they make a false rumor and lie and say that the freezer, the little mini fridge is always broken and that I'm always eating spoiled and rotten food. And they'd be like, that's why she stays sick. And that has nothing to do with it. I, I mean, that was only once or twice that the mini freezer, you know, stopped working for a few hours. And then some hours later, it went back to freeze again. But that was only like one, once or twice that that happened. So they, the way they gossip and act like cerebral not know-it-all narcissists and make a fake justification, they're like, oh, that's why she be sick. No, when I was sick back in May with the um bad vertigo and everything, that was from the directed energy weapons the bad vertigo and nausea. But it's like, how come, I, I mean, I didn't have all that much vertigo and nausea. I, I probably did a time or two, you know, you know, but I'm doing the same thing pretty much when I had a hotel or extended stay or whatever in Cincinnati or Pensacola, they have had moments when I would be on the streets in Pensacola and suffering bad vertigo and dizziness and stuff, but not like what happened in back in May and June, that was the most intense that I've experienced it. And there was direct, the directed energy weapons. It was so bad I had to go to the emergency room and I thought I was gonna die. And they didn't even treat me properly. They were abusive. And then turn around and charge me a fucking bill. But one thing I hate about life is it's very scary being alone by yourself. But people are... Being around people is also very dangerous and scary. But, you know, I have peace alone and by myself. But a lot of times it can get scary being by yourself.
So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, as a, I absolutely hate it here, but I'm glad to have a roof over my head and not have to beg every week for a hotel room or anything like that, you know. Because if I was still homeless on the streets, I would probably would have to beg for help with ho- hotel room money to um, stay out of the heat, you know. <clears throat> in, in Pensacola, it would be like 75, 76, and 77 degrees. And sometimes it it would it could get like hot and stuffy and um me being outside, no air conditioner, no way to cool off or nowhere to go. Or they would have moments where it's too cold. So I'm thankful and glad to be off the streets. But I just don't like it here. And I don't have nowhere else to go. And I absolutely hate Texas. I absolutely do not like Texas. You know, I'm sitting here feeling like the social security thing is like bad luck. And then, you know, even here I experienced racism. They're not going to call me the N-word to my face, but, you know, I've had to deal with racial prejudice. They got a lot of rude people here. And there's, like, well, it's hardly any Blacks here. You know, they don't have that many Black people here. But even other black people have told me that it's pretty racist out here. But then my own race of people sitting here gang stalking just as bad as any other race of people here in this tiny little town. And the the gang stalker is more aggressive when I go to Victoria. So, yeah, it's quite lonesome and scary, but I mean, for for this to be like a small town, I don't get to get my peace and quiet for this to be such a tiny little town, you know. And it's scary that, you know, the fact that everybody around me except myself Everybody else around me is perps. And so I feel like as if I'm in danger and like I really don't have any protection. I I feel like I don't have any like other people around me to be like supportive or protective. Excuse me. So, um. I, I guess in Pens- I mean in uh Cincinnati it was pretty cold but their transport it was a bigger city so the um transportation was very easy and simple and commuting was very easy and they had the buses that run all night I think they would stop running at one o'clock and then start back up around four o'clock, but they had some difficult moments, but they have, um, where the transportation can take you to can like to Kentucky or Indiana. Well, I never been to Indiana, but I've been to Kentucky. And I, I mean, I heard there was a lot of nature 
and uh, and um you know a lot of nature and a lot of interesting stuff out there but here it's like there's this like town seems like a if you don't have your own car or a job then this seems like a punishment prison to live here because then i could take my own car and go to the beach in port lavaca or something like that or go to port lavaca or go somewhere fun you know but i can't even get transportation to get out the house every day and it's like I've been to the library once and I need to go back to the library again to handle more important business. You know. But I'm not done gathering my documents for the social security and it's too much to print out since they want me to go a few years back. <clears throat> but, you know, I'm gonna say it again, I'm glad to at least have a roof over my head and I can cook my own food and, um, you know, I can have a roof over my head and cook my own food. And also, I don't have to worry about roommates. And everything is one set price. Those are the good things. But, you know, I wish I had like a full size stove and with those full size oven and refrigerator, full-size refrigerator and freezer, and also an actual bathtub with water, tap water that's similar to um, Pensacola or something like that. I didn't have to worry about, you know, trying to rinse dishes and then it 30, rinsing a bowl for 30 minutes, you know, and it still got, you know, still get bubbly and suds and stuff. Or, you know, at first the tap, like this morning when I ran the tap water to get some water, um, the tap water looked like it was, the tap water looked like it was um, cloudy. You know, it was kind of cloudy, but I didn't taste that um, mildew kind of moldy, salty taste. You know, it, it taste it tasted more clear. But I was wondering what pollutants in in that water though. But yeah, the the water seemed like it was polluted. The tap water was polluted the first few months. And I didn't, I don't like when I first got here, I didn't have that problem of having to rinse for 30 minutes and there's stuff still not being rinsed off. And that didn't happen until last month. Nick, I guess they changed the water, but you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff that's just a pet peeve and very irritating living here. But you know, I, I'm just sitting here trying to survive, and I ain't got nowhere else to go. But a lot of times, if you if, if this is your only choice, a lot of times it do be something that you don't like or that you hate. You know, but I can't even 
get a job or get that get transportation. I even tr- applied for a couple of caregiver jobs here in Bloomington, and I don't remember if they I got ignored or rejected. So, but I mean, they're keeping me suppressed. I mean, being targeted, it seems like you got to be a forced slave to not getting to have things that you want. You know, it has to be what abusive narcs that don't like you want this and that for you. And they destroy you and ruin you. And then make it like it's for your own good. But it's on, it's for their benefit, not yours. It's like I heard that the gang stalkers only allow you what they what job they want you to have. No matter whether you qualify for it or not. And then I heard that they set the stage for the workplace mobbing and make sure you're unemployed and out of work. And so, you know, it's a struggle trying to survive. And then if you turn to like monetizing your YouTube channel, all social security want to criminalize you for that. Like, or write me trying to be my own author and make a living when I'm getting barely crumbs, making much of nothing, and they want to come after and criminalize you. But then I'm being blocked from working. So, I mean, I, I mean, I'm glad at the moment, I'm glad I have food. But, you know, and I'm, I'm glad I can rest whenever of the day that I want to if I try to fall asleep. But, you know, they have been sleep depriving me. So, I mean, and it's like, it's, it's a lonely, scary world where everybody criminalizes you and everybody's against you and everybody wants the worst for you. And um, everything you do or say is wrong or what people want to disagree or don't approve or... Yeah, so like scary and depressing. I wish that when you didn't live, have to live in a, a world full of like enslavement. I mean, I wish that people would live on this earth to have more freedom and free choice and happiness. But they got such. Um, tight bolts around us mentally the shackle the mind shackles are so tight mentally you know with the slavery and everything like that what employers they want they they won't allow you to work over 30 hours a week so that they won't pay you health insurance. And then they'll try to make you sign an agreement to not work anywhere else and then talk about it's a conflict of interest. And you wonder how other people get to work two jobs. 
But then working two jobs is not a life to live either. You ain't got time for yourself or your family or your kids. So they, they try to make like you can only make a certain amount of money or you can only work this amount of hours. And then they they won't let people work. And then once it's like they want to force you to be on government assistance. So that's more rules you got to follow and more control over you. You know, it'd be great if everybody can be their own homeowner. <clears throat> everybody grow their grow and breed their own food, like their own food, like fruit and animals and vegetables. You know, that if they can milk their own dairy. But, you know, I, I'm sick and I mean, this government control where the abuse of narcissistic fake satanic government, they can be so much free and they can break whatever rules and laws that they want hypocritically, but they want you to be an obedient, compliant slave <laughs> and expect for you to be honest all the time. And, you know, I, I mean, they blocked me from even properly utilizing Ticket to Work so I could get off the Social Security system that I never wanted to be on in the first place. You know, if I could have got an, a college career and then had a job career, and then go to and then work enough to get off of social security and SSI and live independently or have a decent husband. <clears throat> Excuse me, but nobody's decent nowadays. Everybody's, you know, nobody's decent nowadays. You know. And then it's like they want, it's like for a small low wage, the low wage part-time jobs, they make you get paid every two weeks rather than every week or every day. And you work for this. And you can't even get paid the same day. You got to wait two weeks. Yeah. So anyway, I'm just rambling on venting and uh, I definitely need some more sleep. I came on here not realize I mean I thought I didn't have a lot to say but but I'm glad to have a place to live and be by myself I just don't like it here now wish for a better living or you know a better living predicament that would make me happy and if I can have like an increase of income like increase of earned income, you know, even if it's through my writings. But, you know, but the pork and beans and rice that I made Friday, well, I was very sleep deprived when I try to cook it. So... I was very sleep deprived when I tried to cook the bean, the um, beans and rice. So, I mean, I didn't even add sugar to it like I usually would. 
or barbecue sauce or nothing, but I just left it as is and added coconut oil. But it doesn't taste that that great, you know, because I didn't get to cook it how I usually do because I was fighting sleep while trying to cook. And then with the chicken, you know, I cooked the chicken for an hour and a half, just wanting to stay on the safe side, you know. But, yeah, I mean, it's hard either way. But I felt like I wanted to have a home-cooked meal and do actual stove cooking but being sleep deprived makes it not enjoyable. So, but, I mean, for me to be sleep deprived, it makes it not enjoyable. But if the green beans are still good, you know, I might try to have some sweet potato on the side, like a boiled or maybe baked sweet potato and some scallops and some um, green beans and garlic and cilantro and um, those little peppers. That might be the day after tomorrow but, you know, I'm sitting here fighting sleep and dealing with the sleep deprivation. I mean, fighting to, you know, when I would cook, try to fight to stay awake. And then it's like scary because if I try to make something in a crock pot, I'll be feeling like I have to sleep with one eye open because I never know if the food is going to expand and overflow. So that gets scary also, you know. So, yeah, I think I'll have scallops next and then go back to having the, um, the, the beef, excuse me. And I think I have some more yeah, I do. I have some more pork tenderloin also. But, yeah, I guess I had gotten used to eating out. But, you know, I be getting frustrated because I'm still trying to practice with cooking. Like, I used to be able to have food that would taste good enough to die over, but... Now it's like I'm trying to rehabilitate myself and, and trying to improve and practice with the cooking. You know. But I made the rice pretty good on the stove Friday. But the online gang stalkers from one crock pot mistake when I haven't cooked in a few years. And they try to make like she this fool can't even cook beans and rice. Oh, and she wants you to buy her cookbook. Oh, I've been cooking for over 50 years. Like they expect perfection out of you when they're not perfect. Or they think they're better. And but yet they're jealous and hate and envious and hating. And, um, you know, if, and then it's like, it's very hard to get anybody to appreciate or accept my writings and stuff like that, you know, but they have a whole bunch of people who don't support me for me, or they don't, they narcissistically don't like me and think that they're better. And think that everything about me is just useless, worthless trash. That they just want me exterminated. And they just want me off the earth and want me to be gone and forgotten about. 
But when it comes to your favorite celebrity, though, that work for Satan and they die, then you'll say gone, but not gone, but never forgotten. But it's insane that if you don't like somebody and you stop following, harass, and try to control everything that they do and say, and then like you stalk them and stalk and harass and attack until you get rid of that person. Like it seems like they're trying to run me off YouTube and been making me feel dis very discouraged. Like making me feel unwelcome on my own channel. But you're making me feel unwelcome on my own channel, but I have your accounts blocked. And you're still trying to dictate and control my channel. But, I mean, I hate all the good content that I had on my other TikTok. You know, the other content that I saved. But I'm getting much less harassment on there now than on this new TikTok. I'm getting much less harassment on this new TikTok. You know. But I might, it seems like the most I could get is like 250 views on a video that's not about gang stalking or any, anything else. But if I might get 250 views, but only one person pressed the like button. But lately I've been, for the past few days, I've been seeing a bunch of fake spam bots that pretending to fake like my videos and stuff. And I'm wondering, how can I get rid of these fake ass spam bots that's not even human? So, you know, and then the majority of the so-called TI community stabbed me in the back and betrayed me and turned against me or that they're against me and they don't like me. You know, and even professed Christians don't like me for no reason. Targeted or not. Make me feel like I'm always doing or saying something wrong. You know. But one good thing yesterday. When I. Um, yesterday I. Had. Did an hour and a half long video or something like that. And it was, I was surprised that the video uploaded in less than two hours. Well, it took a little over an hour or something. And I think when I first got here, I think if I did like a video that was an hour and a half to two hours, then the video might take an hour to upload. But if I was at like the public library in Cincinnati or Pensacola, an hour and a half long video would take like five or 10 minutes to upload. It wouldn't be taking like three hours, three or four hours. So I'm sitting here trying to figure out what can I do to earn money and get support, you know, to have earned income and get support. I heard if you target it, they'll turn away all your customers if you have a business. But, you know, they said to try to combat the mind control of everybody believing that you're a horrible, bad person. You know... And I see that the fake T.I. perps, they even fight amongst each other. 
And some people say that that's just street theater. Of them pretending to be against each other, but like secretly behind closed doors, best friends. But they'll pretend to publicly fight as a way to, um, they'll pretend to publicly fight as a way to throw off the balance of us trying to fight against and try to combat the gang stalking. But, you know, if you'll see fake T.I. perps that even say that they hate gang stalkers, well, you hate yourself too. I mean, they even have fake T.I. perps that get paid and they act like as if they're speaking against fake paid T.I.s when you won your damn self. You hate yourself. You put fake, but pretending you're real. You you claim you hate gang stalkers, but then you be so destructive and do a perp stuff. Smear campaigns, lying, bullying, stalking, following, harassing. I mean, well, if you say that you can't stand me, well, why you follow me on TikTok, Twitter? YouTube and every and you stalk and read my blog, you follow me on every platform. But you hate you hate me, but you follow me everywhere and trying to control me and then lie and say that I'm the fakest TI in the TI community. When you perping and abusing. You know. But I mean, as I said, I'm sitting here feeling like, you know, got no choice but to try to stay here for as long as, as long as trying to fight to stay here as long as I could, even though I don't like it here. And if I, I mean, I'm not going to try to voluntarily leave here and then don't have anywhere else to go. But if I end up leaving here, I would hope I can have a better housing situation. But if not, you know, the, I told y'all the online gang stalkers have been making threats to call up the place and have me kicked out of here and back homeless on the streets again. And even the in-person gang stalkers are trying to make those setups too. So if I end up back homeless on the streets, it ain't by choice. They did it. It ain't by choice. They did it. That's why, you know, they say that a targeted individual should promise to, after you know the truth, that a targeted individual should promise to never commit suicide or never let the program um, make you go and commit suicide. But, you know, I don't even really have any account of a TI accountability partner or a friend at the moment. You know, I'm just by myself. But even a fake TI perps make a fake disclaimer that if they die, then the government did it, not them. And they'll say that, oh, I'll never commit suicide. But you sitting here saving your own ass and your own skin because you sold out and can't get out and you continue to perp while you're still being targeted. And you believe the lie that the gang stalkers said when the gang stalkers lie and say that your targeting will end if you become a gang stalker too. And, And they must give in and say, fuck it. Or they probably join them saying that, yeah, I'm going to become a gang stalker so I can gang stalk the gang stalkers right back. Some of them be thinking like that. But me personally, I want no parts in the gang stalking movement. The gang stalking cult network. 
You know, all the stuff that they're falsely accusing me of doing or being guilty of, they're using projection. And then also, like, they're using projection. And then also, um, that's what they want me to become. Excuse me. (sighs) Sorry. So, I would never want to join the the gang stalking network. So it's like, would you mean that if I um, join the gang stalking network, then I could commit all the, I can commit all the scam and fraud that I want and get away with it? No, I would rather just try to do the right thing. I don't ever want, that's why I guess professed targeted individuals will say stay strong or don't give in. Because they try, the gang stalkers trying to beat you into submission to become one of them. You know. <clears throat> so, another thing I wanted to talk about was that the um like when I tried the other day to write a letter and send it off and then when I try to write journal on paper like lately the gang stalkers have been making my eyes burn and some people say that some people say that um when they make your eyes burn, that means that they're gassing me up in here. That they you know, that I'm being gassed. So yeah, they've been making my eyes burn. So they say that means I'm being gassed. And I heard another way that you're being gassed. I heard if you see yellow yellow stuff on the wall. I heard that's another clue. I think I remember hearing that there's yellow stuff on the wall. Whoa. My phone just fell. Again, they said there's yellow stuff on the wall. That's more proof that you've been gassed. But, you know, I'm just sitting here living day to day. Day to day. And... Like just taking everything one day at a time. Can't even plan for the future. And I'm just taking everything one day at a time. And everything is just so depressing and scary. You know. But. I've been. I heard. See at first they said it was 30 something. And. Now they're saying that the death toll in Hawaii with the fires, that the death toll reached up to at least 89 from those fires in Hawaii. And then you hear like everybody's losing their minds Everybody's going mental. Everybody's going crazy. Everybody's losing their minds and going ballistic. You're having strange news now. Stuff that hasn't been normal, you know. But it's like they got other people who are crazy, who really are crazy. And they drive cars. And and it's like, if you're a crazy thug criminal, how you get to have access to cars and, and guns and then still get to be given a chance to drive a car? You know, like that Darrell Brooks person, they would give him a chance back in society. Or if he would have been let back out of society, I bet you they wouldn't stop him from driving a car. But they keeping me to be too poor to have access to a vehicle or 
or drive a car or anything like that, you know. They're keeping me to be too poor. It's mind boggling. And then the government assistance that I'm getting, I'm sitting here feeling like a bad person or they're manipulating me to feel like a scamming thief. When I'm just sitting here trying to survive and, um, you know, make it, they're making me feel like as if I don't deserve the government assistance that I'm getting. But it's not a whole lot, though. You know, but I mean, I said I wanted to try to work my way to be independent from the system as much as possible or try to be self-reliant or self-sufficient and they're suppressing me. And that's one of the reasons why I had to deal with homelessness and be forced to um, beg and panhandle because I'm sitting here feeling like I don't know how to survive. But, you know, I wish I had the knowledge and the leeway or the ability and the resources and tools, you know, for to be self-reliant or self-sufficient. But I heard that man, people, human beings can never be 100% totally self-reliant that you sometime along in the along the way you're always gonna need help from other people. We can't even help ourselves. We really need God, you know. Help from God. We can't do this all by ourselves. But it's a lonely, scary road, you know. So thanks for listening to me. I'm gonna try to take a nap. I'm so sleepy.